Hey guys, it's Linux Next here. In today's video, we are going to be doing a tutorial of how to set up a AMD GPU on Linux. As I know there is a lot of posts that talk about how it's so easy to um, install a Linux distro and like set up an AMD GPU because it's already pre-installed when it comes to the drivers, but there is a bit more to it than just that. Uh, there is a couple things that you just need to know about when it comes to um, installing a Linux distro with, with an AMD GPU installed on your computer. So we're gonna go over and explain all of that and how to you know, pick a correct distro when it comes to the hardware, the AMD GPU that you're using. So the very first thing that we need to discuss is two drivers, just so you understand these two drivers. The uh, first one is the AMD GPU kernel driver. Now this driver, as it says, kernel, so it's in the Linux kernel. And then there is a user space driver called Mesa or Mesa. I call it Mesa, some people call it Mesa. You can decide what you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. But what does matter is these particular versions of Mesa and the Linux kernel that will include the AMD GPU kernel driver. Now with the AMD GPU kernel driver, this highly depends on what GPU that you have. If you have a RDNA 3 GPU or an RDNA 4 GPU even, if those um, come out and you're able to get one, uh, you basically need to use the latest kernel, I would say, because there is certain fixes and improvements that are arriving in the Linux kernel, especially in the 6.13 release. There is a power profile fix that solves a bunch of FPS issues, and there is a RPM fan turnoff feature that a lot of users want. So if you are someone that owns an RDNA 3 or maybe even an RDNA 4, if that's able to support the fan turnoff feature, you should try and use at least kernel 6.13 or above when it comes to uh, the support of your GPU. And then when it comes to Mesa, because like Mesa is actually just like, it's like one big driver that includes multiple different graphics drivers in them. So the one that is important for AMD is called RADV. And if we search up RADV, RADV is a Vulkan driver for AMD GCN slash RDNA GPUs. So this driver is used for basically everything when it comes to graphics API stuff like when you go to play games. So if you're using DXVK, which is DirectX 11 to, uh, or you know, it's actually DirectX 8, 9, 10, 11 to Vulkan, it's going to use this driver to interact with the, the graphics card. So then you can actually, you know, play the game. And then the same goes for DirectX 12 to uh, VKD3D, that, is which is slash actually just Vulkan because uh, this is all Vulkan basically. Uh, it's going to use RADV again to play that game properly on your graphics card. And there is other drivers in Mesa like NVK, which is for NVIDIA and then ANV for Intel. Uh, so when it comes to what version of Mesa you should use, well, the latest one is uh, 24.3, I'm pretty sure is the one that came out. If I, yeah, oh, 24.3.2 is the latest one. Now, if you're using a desktop uh, GPU for AMD right now, you should be okay when it comes to using the latest Mesa version. But if you are using a laptop, I would just, um, you can test out Mesa 24.3, but I have heard there has been a couple of issues when it comes to like um, sleeping uh, problems specifically, or um, some uh, crashes that have been happening also with applications like opening Discord and running that, for some reason that will crash uh, the laptop. Uh, so there has been some issues with Mesa 24.3. So when it comes to what Mesa should you use, really you should try and use the latest, but if it doesn't work for you, you can try and like downgrade to a lower Mesa version. Now, if you install a Arch uh, distro or not even that, you just install Arch and you may select the wrong drivers uh, because when you install Arch, if you do it the wrong way, I guess you could say on like an install script, it might install the AMD VLK driver, which is another open source driver for another open source Vulkan driver for AMD, but it's not the same as REDV for in Mesa. So you definitely do not want to be using this, I would say when it comes to compatibility with games. I have tested it 
and it does work well, but RADV does work better just because there's more contributions going into that driver than it is with VLK, uh, and especially companies like Valve engineers that are working super hard on RADV, because if you don't know, RADV is used on the Steam Deck or even on SteamOS in general. So if you're using a Pacific handheld that use AMD, uh, let's say like the new Lenovo uh, Go, uh, Legion Go S that's coming out, that is also going to use RADV because it's using AMD hardware and it's going to be using SteamOS. So it's going to be using RADV. And there is one more driver which is called the AMD GPU Pro driver. Now the only reason I would install this driver is if you want to use like HIP and like AMF and ROCM. Now you don't necessarily need to install this driver to get some of that functionality like ROCM. You can get ROCM working uh, with the specific package. I forgot what it was called but it, there is a package for this. If I remember it, I'll comment down below or in the description of how to install it. It's pretty easy, it's basically like a side package and it gets things working like in DaVinci Resolve, for example, if you wanna get like hardware acceleration and all that stuff, uh, or in like Blender, for example, to use like HIP and all that, that brings that functionality. But this driver, you don't really necessarily need it. Uh, but if you are into like the whole enterprise world of things, uh, like it says here, like AMD GPU Pro Vulkan required dependency for AMF, uh, which is an encoder, AMD GPU Pro OpenCL used because Mesa OpenCL is not fully complete, proprietary component only for Polaris GPUs, the onward GPUs use the Open ROCM OpenCL, which is like I said, there is a specific package for ROCM to bring that functionality for you without having to install the AMD GPU Pro driver. Now, when it comes to what distro should you install? Uh, I would say if you're on like an RDNA 2 or below GPU, you can install basically any distro except like Debian or any like LTS distro. I wouldn't recommend any type of LTS or slow releasing distro uh, just because they have a pretty old kernel and mess up. So when it comes to compatibility, it you might be missing a couple of things and you'll be like, what the hell, where are these things? Or performance might not be on par. There might be some power profile issues, stuff like that where you're not going to get the best experience when it comes to like playing games for example so i would say a distro like nobara for example that is a well-known distro that you can um, install it sets up everything for you uh, of course on an amd card everything's already like set up for you but it is a fedora based one so it does pre-install like the right codex for you or like video codex uh, because if you use normal Fedora, you might have some issues when it comes to specific like codec issues or uh, some mess of packages that removed some functionality uh, because it's like proprietary stuff and Fedora wants to be as open source as possible. So like Nabara does solve that. Another one is uh, Bazite, of course. Uh, this is a immutable uh, Linux gaming distro. It is used on a wide variety of hardware like handheld devices. If you ever want to like uh, get away from Windows on a handheld, you would install something like Bazite because they have really good support when it comes to handhelds, like third party support for handhelds, as, as you can see here. But you can also set it up as a desktop PC or a home theater PC if you want to. And if you want to go to the Arch realm of things, you can either just install Arch with the Arch install script, which is a little bit advanced. Um, you know, it's basically all text base when you're installing it so there's no special like GUI install or anything um you have to figure that all by yourself when it comes to installing arch that way but if you want to install it like an arch derivative like arch based uh there is a uh, cache's os there is endeavor os these distros are really good when it comes to uh, providing the latest packages on arch and like Cache's OS, they have their own, um, they package like AUR packages, uh, which are community made uh, packages, uh, but it's all it's already like compiled for you. Um, another one is like Garuda, I think it's called Garuda Linux. I think I spelled that wrong. I did. Uh, another pretty all right Linux distro, I would say. It is a bit customized, I would say, when it comes to the theme. Personally, I don't like that, but it does have a lot of functionality and it does have the chaotic AUR, which is similar to Cache's OS, where it has pre-compiled AUR packages for you, so you don't have to compile anything. You can just grab it straight from the um, chaotic AUR or on Cache's OS, you can grab it from Cache's OS repos. Now you can use a newer Mesa version if you're using Flatpak applications. I forgot to mention this because 
you can do that if you want to. Uh, if you are using like an older distro and you want a newer Mesa version for playing games, you can use Flatpak and it's already going to use the default uh, Mesa for you. So you don't have to worry about like installing it or anything. Uh, you just install a package like Lutris, for example, or Flatpak Steam, uh, and you can get a newer Mesa version. Now, you are going to have to learn how Flatpak works when it comes to permissions, uh, which is pretty easy. You can grab an application like FlatSeal, and you can go through each application and give it the right permissions for like storage, for example. If you want to add extra drives on Steam, you would use, use this to give permission to Steam Flatpak to give permission to see the other drives wherever they're mounted, um, so then you can add it in the Steam application. Uh, but if you want to use a newer Mesa version, uh, the best way about it uh, on an older distro, if you want to get better um, compatibility with games, is to use Flatpak, in my opinion. And then if you want to overclock your GPU, I think the best application for that is called Lact. And if we do go to uh, to the GitHub here, you can see uh, that this GUI application allows you to look at the GPU info, like your model, manufacturer, and all that, and you're able to overclock it easily. And it's pretty easy to install, I would say. You can just go to the releases tab here, scroll down to wherever the releases are, and you can grab <laughs> whatever distro that you're using. So if you're on Fedora, let's say Fedora 41, you would grab the .rpn version for Fedora 41 on x86 underscore 64. If you're on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, you would grab this one. If you're on RAL, if you're on Ubuntu, if you're on, I think, Debian also. And then if you're on Arch, it's already going to be in the repo. So you can just do Paru um, Lact and it should be available as in the AUR. Or if you're on Cache's OS, it might already be in there, which it is for me and it is for the AUR. So I will just easily install it and then we can open it and actually look at the Mesa version. It shows the GPU model, the manufacturer. You can go into the OCE, you can change the power, you can change the maximum GPU clock, the maximum VRAM clock, you can change the performance level. So if, uh, by default, we're on automatic at the moment and it's using 3D underscore full underscore screen, which is the right power profile, I would say. But if you want the best performance, I would say set it to highest clocks. And so it's basically just going to force it to do the highest clock speed. And if you do have a newer GPU like RDNA 3, uh, this may not work properly when it comes to setting that power profile. And you're going to have to use Linux kernel 6.13 to actually get the fix properly. So then the GPU can actually go to 3D full screen. Uh, but if you're on on uh, RDNA 2 or below, you should be able to set this to the highest clock speed um, or at least do manual and then set it to 3D full screen. Uh, you should be okay. And then you can go to uh, thermals here if you want to change the fan control. You can look at the software version and there is um, charts so you can actually look at different graphs of the GPU. So temperature, clock speed, fan speed, power usage, all of it. So that is the basically the rundown of setting up an AMD GPU on Linux, I would say today. You need to really make sure that you're using the right Mesa and kernel if you're on a really new GPU. If you're on like RDNA 2 or below, uh, you don't necessarily need the newest kernel or Mesa, but it's always nice to have a newer version because there's newer things like Vulkan extensions which brings better support for the graphics APIs, like with DXVK or VKD3D. Uh, and then with the kernel driver, there's lots of features being added for newer GPUs, like the um, fan control or the right power profile that's going to be set to the highest, all things like that. So if you guys did enjoy this video, definitely give it a like, definitely subscribe to the channel. And thank you to my supporters. I'll show a screenshot of you now. I really do appreciate you guys giving me money every single month. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Hey guys, it's Linux Next here. In today's video, we are going to be...